You're listening to the How to Talk to Girls podcast, where you'll learn step-by-step how to meet and seduce beautiful women, whether you're looking for one out of fun, a week-long fling, or a long-term relationship. I'm your host, Trip, and the episode starts now. Hello and welcome to the How to Talk to Girls podcast. I'm your host, Trip Kramer from tripadvice.com. And today, talking about a common subject, I know that it is difficult for men to talk to girls. So I want to talk a little bit about that with you today. How do you get rid of the nerves around girls? How do you eliminate that? And how do you do without alcohol? And I'm going to tell you a story in just a bit here about how I did it and how alcohol removal was one of the best things I literally ever did for myself in my life. I'm not kidding. I'm not exaggerating here. And by the way, I still drink. I still enjoy a glass of scotch, a glass of wine, a martini. You know, I do like the taste of of some alcohol. But the difference is, is that today, I don't use alcohol for nerves, literally at all. Not even a little bit, not even just a dash. The only reason why I ever drink is because I actually like the taste of the alcohol. And it's very rare that I get so drunk or even drunk in general, you know, after just like a glass of something, uh, that's pretty much, that's it for me. And I'm not saying this obviously to show off. I'm saying this to you because this is something you can do too. I mean, 100%. I remember that when I first started this, when I was in my early 20s, I was coming off of college, you know, where I drank all the time. I was partying all the time. And it's funny because I remember my senior year, I was so depressed. And now I know exactly why. I was depressed because I was eating like shit. I was having fast food for almost every meal. I was drinking multiple nights per week. So of course I was feeling crappy. And then I took that into my early 20s where, you know, you still party, you still go out and you still drink. And I was using alcohol to really get over any kind of fear of talking to women. The funny part was is that it didn't even work. That's how bad my fear and approach anxiety was. It didn't even work. It really didn't. It did not work for me. I, I would I would drink and it would still be really scared to go up and talk to a woman. So I really had to figure out how to do it. And again, I'll tell you that in just a minute. I want to give you some updates if you're listening to this in, in real time. Just so you know, if you're not aware, I do a live show on my YouTube channel. And the reason why I'm talking about it today is because I'm just so excited. I, I got a new studio set up. I have a whole new format. And you know, having guests on from time to time, and I'm really starting to do more lives because people have really liked it. I'm liking it. I'm enjoying it. So, if you're ever interested in coming on and and just seeing me live on YouTube, I'm doing them every week. I'm going to tell you a time that I do them right now, but it could absolutely change. But for now, for dealing with some real time stuff, and you're listening to this right now, I do it on Tuesdays at 12 p.m. Central and 7 p.m. Central on Wednesday nights. Okay, so check it out. And either way, you can click on the notification bell and you can get notifications of when I go live. Or you can check them out. I keep them on the channel. So you can even just watch them later on. But I'm doing these live shows and they're fun and you can interact with me there and I can see you chatting with me and and you can even call in. I have a call-in number. So it's really cool. So if you ever want to come live with me on YouTube, then check it out. And I think you'll you'll really enjoy it. So that's that's happening really soon. And like I said, I got a new studio I'm building. So I'm just really pumped about it. I'm excited about it. And I'm excited to be talking to you. So check it out on my YouTube channel, which is just Trip Advice. If you didn't already know, that's where you can find me for videos. But for now, we're on the podcast. Also, also, coaching is available. Coaching is available. You can apply today. And I would apply because a lot of applications are coming in. I think this seems to be a heavy time towards the end of summer. What happens is a lot of guys get back into uh, you know, the, the cold months out of the year if you happen to be in the Northern Hemisphere. And something about those cold months where you just want, I don't know, you just, you're just you seeking a, a woman, someone to you know, spend time with when it gets cold. So if you're interested in getting help with coaching, apply today at coachedbytrip.com. You go to coachedbytrip.com, you'll see an application and you can apply to work with me one-on-one. And if you have already applied and you have not heard from me, 
sorry, that just probably means that you're either under 18 or you have not filled out the application in a way that I'm looking for. Some guys literally write one word and that's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for someone who's serious. You don't have to write a whole essay or paragraphs on paragraphs, but just give me a good idea of where your situation is at in the application. You know, just a few sentences at the very minimum. So if you apply, I will definitely 100% read and sift through the application. I'm the one who goes through all the applications. I'm the one who does this. I don't have an assistant do it. I look at all them and I get on the phone with you to see if coaching is a good fit for you. And I've had some guys who've been signing up recently who have been getting amazing results because every week we get on the phone and I give them homework and they just freaking knock it out of the park. They really do. They're going out, they're meeting girls. I had one guy who got all the way to the point where he, and by the way, this is a guy who never in his life, never in his life has been able to go up and talk to women confidently. And now he's at the point where he's getting their numbers and getting them interest in him enough to the point where he's making out with them at the bar. Okay. So this is my recent client. So we have gone and, but this was in five weeks. We got him to this point. I kid you not five weeks. Okay. You know what? One of these days I'll have one of these guys on the podcast. It's just, I know a lot of you guys, you want to keep this anonymous because you're just not wanting to share it. And I totally get it. And my clients all remain anonymous unless they tell me otherwise, but either way you should join you should see if coaching is a good fit for you. We'll hop on a call and discuss it. So go to coachedbytrip.com and apply today. So let's get into our topic. I'm talking about how to eliminate the fear of going up to women without the reliance of alcohol. Something I've preached a lot here on the podcast. I definitely have. I've talked a lot about going up and talking to women without having to rely on any outside sources. When I actually do coaching, I tell my guys, I say, wouldn't it be awesome if you could go out and have this superpower where you would literally never need anything but just the ability to speak and go up to a woman confidently and be able to attract her? So that means no caffeine, no alcohol, no drugs, no other stimulants by any means. I mean, listen, if you're drinking coffee, you're drinking a Red Bull, not the end of the world. But, you know, taking away any kind of substances and really just being able to tap into your raw confidence. I remember there was this bar that I went to in LA when I lived there in my early 20s. Man, I forgot what it was called. I'm sure it's not there anymore. In LA, they, they change bars quite a bit. But it was this bar and it was on Wilshire Wait, I remember now. Let me see if it's around. I think it was called Busby's. Looking it up on Google right now. Busby's, Busby's, Los Angeles. Well, look at that. It is still there. Huh. I went to Busby's. I remember I'd go there because I lived right there. And I remember I'd get so drunk, so drunk. And not because of trying to avoid problems. I wasn't an alcoholic. It was just a weekend drinker, but I wanted to drink so I could talk to girls. God, it just killed me because even with all that alcohol, I was barely able to say hi. And this is what triggered me to get better at this. I realized, man, even alcohol, the thing that helps people talk to people is not helping me. And I'm getting drunk to do this. Why don't I try to learn this without alcohol? And I remember I used to read that book, The Game by Neil Strauss. A lot of people found pickup or dating advice through that book. I was, I was actually one of those people. And I remember I read this so, so many years ago. And I remember them, I think he said in the book that they would go out without drinking alcohol. Or maybe he did. I don't know. But they would do that alcohol. And that, that kind of encouraged me. I said, well, that'd be so cool. What if I could do that? So I actually trained myself to be able to go out without alcohol. And I remember one of the first times I went out, I went out on Coenga Boulevard, also in Los Angeles. And I would go out and when I was on Coinga Boulevard, I'd go out to this one bar. And I remember stepping into this bar at like 1030, sober. And it was so loud in there. And I was in this bar and I was like, I can't even remember if I've ever been inside of a bar at night when it's hopping. And I was sober. I don't think, I think it was probably my first time ever because it was such a shock to my system. Like, What? this is crazy. This is so weird. It's so weird to be here and not feel some sort of buzz or intoxication. 
man, it's crazy. It's it's really just wild how you know dependent and and how common it is to just drink before you go out and go to the bar. So so here I am, uncomfortable as all hell, in this bar, and I remember looking at these women, thinking there is no way in hell. I'm going to go over to these women and say hello. I remember my first night I went out, I was out for four hours and I didn't say hi to one person. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I didn't know what to say. You know, even if I did know what to say, even if I had a resource like this podcast where I talk all about, about, you know, openers and what to say and, and all that stuff, it wouldn't matter. I was so freaked out. I don't even know what I was freaked out about. I'm not even sure. I never even analyzed. I never even thought about it, but I would go out And it took me at least four or five times going out to finally say hello to a girl, okay? It took me that long. And I almost gave up in that process. I thought there's no way I can do this. It wasn't until I think the third night out, I finally got the courage to just say hi really quickly to a girl that was walking past me on the street at like 11 o'clock at night, you know, who was with another girl going to the bar. Like that was the first, I remember like clearly I was on Hollywood Boulevard and that happened. And it was such a small thing, but it was such a small victory for me. It actually felt amazing. I mean, this is how bad it was. This is how bad it was for me. You know, it's funny. Sometimes I get on the phone with with guys who are signing up for coaching and they tell me that they've done a few approaches or sometimes they do like an approach a week or once in a while. And I'm just like, damn, like, I wish I was in that position. You're way, way further than me, you know, when I first started. So I had to really build it up. And this is kind of my advice to you. This is what I know works. I have not heard of any other way that works. I really haven't, except for going out and really slowly just tackling it. And you might go out and you might be out like me for three hours and not say hi to a single girl. It's possible. It can happen. It can totally, totally happen. And I want you to be okay with that. Again, fast forwarding to where I am now, I still have a little bit of approach anxiety. I don't think it's 100% gone away. I think I still feel the nerves. But the difference between me now and me, when was that? I don't know, 12 years ago, was that even though I still have the nerves now, they don't do anything. They They don't affect me. They just exist. In fact, they exist more as adrenaline in in a positive way, pumping me up to go talk to a girl if I ever want to do that. So it feels good. It feels positive. Where before it was not a, well, it was adrenaline, but I looked at it as, as this crippling anxiety, this fear, right? And so I had to get over that through this process that I call systematic desensitization, which is just really desensitizing yourself with a process to something that is scary. So the nerves will start to go away once you're starting to talk to women and experiencing it. The reason why you're so scared to talk to women, this is one of the many reasons, but one of the many reasons why you're so scared is because you don't really know what to expect. And that's what I realized I was scared of too. I didn't realize what would have happened because I'd never done it before. So I just had this fear. It wasn't even so much a fear of rejection. It was just a fear in general. Like I didn't know what to expect. You fear the unknown. That's what we fear. Or we fear the unknown, mainly, right? Of course, we could also fear death too. But in terms of us having situations where it's not life or death, it's maybe a situation like this or some sort of anxiety, it's a fear of an unknown situation. We don't know what's going to happen. And that's our body helping us. So in, this, in a way, we, what we can do is we can thank our bodies. I know this sounds a little woo-woo, but it does help in a way. It's like, you know, hey, thanks, body. Like, you're giving me this physiological and mental reaction to the fact that I want to go over and talk to that girl. Thank you. I appreciate you're working and I'm alive. My heart's beating. But I don't really need that right now because there's no actual fear that needs to be here, right? Because... What is there to actually fear? Well, nothing really. You say you fear rejection, but what does that really mean? Or you fear the unknown, like the unknown of what? Of a conversation? Like what's, what's, what's actually scary about that? The rejection? 
what's actually harmful about the rejection. The only thing that's actually harmful to you is the way your ego is going to perceive the rejection itself, right? Your ego is going to say, ooh, I'm really hurt. I got rejected. And it's going to tell you, hey, man, you're not good enough. You're not good enough for women. You're a loser. It's not going to work out for you. So really, <laughs> it's so funny saying this out loud. You really, you're really fearing yourself. You're fearing what you may say to yourself once it happens. Because no one else is saying that you're a loser. I mean, good luck trying to go out and get rejected to the point where a girl is saying mean things to you. Yeah, she might be rude to you, but who knows why? She doesn't know you. Maybe she's being rude because she's had a bad day or she's been hit on by so many guys that she doesn't want to be hit on again. So, you know, she says something mean to you. But, but please, if you ever get a rejection that bad where a girl's saying mean things to you and she's sober and she's not crazy, email me and I'll Venmo you $100 because it just doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. I think the worst rejection I ever got, and I and I air quote worst because it wasn't bad at all. It was actually really funny. I was out at a club and I went up to a girl and I opened my mouth about to say hello or whatever I was about to say. And the girl screamed and goes, fuck you, and then walked away. And I thought that was hilarious. And I've never had a rejection that bad since. Right? The only other, I don't know, bad rejection I could say is if you're going up and talking to a girl, she's not giving you eye contact and you're just like, ah, this girl's not feeling it. She's bored, whatever. And then you walk away and then you move on to someone else who's interested. It's so interesting how you can, and you don't maybe know this because you haven't approached that many women, but I can tell you how different the reactions are from some women. You'll go up to some women and they'll be like not having it at all. They don't want to be talking to you. They're trying to have a girl's night. They don't want you around. And then two minutes later, you'll approach another group of girls and they're all friendly and they're nice. and Like, hey, what's up? And they're inviting and they want to talk to you. So you have this kind of juxtaposition between all these different approaches. But guys get really scared to even test that out because they just don't want that bad one. They don't want to feel that pain of that bad one because they're fearing themselves. Back to my point here, you're fearing what you're going to say to yourself or this false reality that you're about to create telling yourself that you're a loser, that you're never going to do this, that this isn't going to work for you. And I'm one of the guys who had some of the worst approach anxiety ever. And the fact that I conquered it through this process of systematic desensitization, going out night after night after night, approaching, 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 starting with little approaches, just saying hello to a girl, to then working up my way to asking a question, to working my way up to having full conversations. It took months. It took months, but I trained myself to do this without alcohol. And by God, it was one of the best, like I said earlier, the best decisions I've ever made in my entire life. In fact, so good that I could go out even now without alcohol to the loudest club in the world and still have a good time, as long as I'm not tired, right? As long as I have some energy inside of me and I'm not tired and want to go to bed, I'll have a good time because I don't need that alcohol. And I'll have a better time. What was really cool, what happened was, this is so interesting. I ended up getting to the point where I would go out so much without alcohol that finally I got over my fear of talking to women. And then I was like, oh, you know, there was a night where I was like, oh, well, why don't I have a few drinks? I just who cares? I'm, you know, I'm out. Let's, let's have a few drinks. I haven't done this in a long time. So I'd have a couple of beers. And I would have a couple of beers or a couple of drinks, whatever it was, and I hated it. It made me less confident. It actually turned me into this shy person because I didn't feel in control of my body anymore. When you get drunk, you're not really in control. Now, for some people, that looseness helps with the confidence, right? That's the liquid courage, as they say, right? That's the liquid courage, which I never really got. So... What happened to me is it wasn't liquid courage. It was liquid shyness. It's like, oh, I didn't feel like I knew how to talk to a girl anymore because I was kind of like tipsy and I was a little, you know, like buzz and I wasn't thinking straight. And so like I couldn't be in control of exactly what was going on. And I felt like less confident because I've trained myself to do it sober. So doing it with alcohol was actually harder. So then it got to the point where if I ever wanted to drink, it was solely because I enjoyed the 
the the drink I was having, not to not to go and talk to women. So it was so much easier for me. I mean, how crazy is that? No one's ever really talked about that. I'm curious to see if you'd have the same experience. So let me give you some, some tips here in terms of how you can do this. If you want to eliminate the fear, you need to create a schedule and you need to treat it like working out. Okay. So if you've ever worked out before, you're going to kind of know where I'm going with this. And if you haven't, I'll explain to you how it works. When you want to lose weight or gain muscle, you need to go to the gym. So the best way to do that is you schedule times during the week to go to the gym. Maybe that's, for example, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or let's say, you know, 7 a.m. before work or after work at 6 p.m. You need to do the same thing for approaching. You need to set a schedule to go out a certain amount of times during the week. I would recommend at least, at the very least, two and go out and practice your approaches. Spend a half an hour to an hour figuring out how many approaches you can do within that time. I suggest starting with something really small to make it easy for yourself, as small as even like one or two. That's what I did when I started. Doing it without alcohol, and then slowly increasing it every single week. So every week, you have your set times and days that you go out, it's in your calendar, and you do a certain amount of approaches. This is something, by the way, that I actually help with in my coaching program. So when we work together, I hold you accountable to do these approaches, and I give you more uh, specified tips in terms of you know your specific issues, in terms of openers to use, where to go in your town, when to do it. We work together through everything, and I hold your hand through the whole process. So Again, if you want me to help you with that, you can go to coachbytrip.com or you can do it on your own by going out a few times per week, holding yourself accountable or doing with a friend who will do it with you. And watch as you get so much better and you actually eliminate the nerves when you go up to women slowly but surely through the process of systematic desensitization every single week. Watch as you get better every single week. It's slow. It's a slow process. And if you have massive approach anxiety or massive social anxiety, it might take you longer, but don't compare yourself to others. Everyone's kind of on their own journey here. So you go out and you start these approaches and you do a little bit more every single week. It starts with maybe a hello. Maybe you have an opener to use. You can sift through some of the podcast episodes where I talk about openers or maybe you know go through my Hooked program, which is a self-coaching program all done through videos that I have in a member's area. If you're interested in that, go to getherhooked.com and you can get the program there. So you're going to be going out, making this a habit, doing some approaches, and eventually getting better and better and better. And you're going out specifically to eliminate the fear of rejection, eliminate the fear of anxiety, eliminate the fear of talking to girls, not to necessarily get numbers, not to necessarily have sex, not to necessarily get dates. That's next step. In fact, that's the really, that is the bonus of being able to get over your fear. Because if I just, you know, had a magic wand and I tapped you and all of your fear was gone and you just could talk to women with no problem, you'd automatically start getting dates because you'd just be able to be comfortable and confident and that would already get women attracted to you. You're more than halfway there. If we just get rid of the fear, everything else is just technical, you know, being able to be dominant, moving forward in the interaction, things like that. I talk about that also in my program, Hooked, more about dominance and, and how it all works and, and the flow of the conversation to get her interested in you and attracted. But more than half the process is getting over the fear of being comfortable talking to women. So take that and run with it. See what it does for you. See what it does for you. And do it without alcohol. Do it without drugs. Do it without anything. Do it with raw, raw confidence. Or I should say, create that raw confidence without having to use some sort of substance. So I hope that helps. I hope that is encouraging. I hope my story motivates you in some way because really it's possible for anyone. Gosh, it's possible for me. It's possible for you. Like I said, deathly afraid of talking to women. And I'm an extrovert, by the way. Okay, I'm an extrovert. And it was still tough for me. Still tough for me. So can only imagine. I can only imagine what it's you, what it's like for you if you're an introvert, because it's harder to go out. But still, I mean, I'm here, a guy who likes to socialize, but it was still very hard. So if I can do it, you can do it. Good luck. Talk to you in the next episode.